Well, if you're a regular viewer of Fox 9, you may have noticed a member of our TV family has been missing from our newscast. Reporter Courtney Godfrey suffered a traumatic injury in a boating accident and has been recovering for the last two months. And let me tell you, we miss her around here. Tonight, she shares her progress and her story of perseverance. Here's Amy Hockard and photojournalist Spencer Driscoll. Honey? Yes, sweetie? Can you come help me? Yep. It's not something you'd ever think about. You want crutches or bent knee? No, I just want to use the crutches. Okay. The series of steps you take just to move through your day. You hold those. The two of us. I got it. Getting down to the garage, getting into the car. Just the two of us is way harder. <laughs> it's way harder. Can you hand me my water bottle? And then it sounds, I will tell you. It's not something you think about. So we're going to just leave this here. Until you can no longer take those steps on your own. Thank you. This is Courtney Godfrey, her husband Ryan. I'll see you inside. And her new normal. Hi. Checking in for Courtney. I was just doing what we do every weekend in the summer in Minnesota, and my life changed in an instant. September 15, 2017, Courtney was boating with family on Christmas Lake, a lake they'd been on hundreds of times before. Only this time, Courtney fell out of the boat on a turn. The propeller underneath caught her foot. I was the one driving, and even though it was an accident, um, that weighs really heavy on me and it, it's hard and uh, you replay that image in your head. It's hard for you when I came out of the water and you saw oh. what happened. Uh, words, it's, it's tough. Courtney was rushed to Hennepin County Medical Center. Her foot was barely hanging on and unsalvageable, but that wasn't all. So you came in Saturday evening and said, Here's why I think we need to take more of your leg, which was a hard thing for me to hear. Just hours after the accident, orthopedic trauma surgeon Dr. Andrew Schmidt and prosthetist Yakov Gradinar delivered the difficult news. Without a heel, the next best place for a prosthetic would be under her knee, which would mean doing a much bigger amputation. If you lose the forefoot, you lose that push off or that lever. And you may have a, a leg you can stand on, but literally that's all you can do is stand on it. The next morning, nearly half of Courtney's leg was gone. In its place, fear and heartbreak. The first time they unwrapped my bandages and I saw my leg, we all just cried. We all just sat around and cried. It's all right, you're good. It's okay, sweetheart. You can cry. It was a loss, and everyone in that room needed to grieve. Ryan says I think about it every minute. And you do, but it gets better every day. It was especially difficult for Courtney and I Ryan. Just, I, yeah, They've only been know, married I, a year I, I, and already stranger, navigating you know, deep waters. And an accident happened. Accidents happen. And we've decided in this house that we're not going to say sorry. We're not going to look back. We're not going to say what if. Our wedding song, though, was an Ed Sheeran song about getting older. And part of it in there is, will you love me when your legs don't work anymore? And the answer is yes. Seven weeks after the accident, Courtney is back at HCMC. Yeah. Well, this floor, this, this room, is, this is where my recovery started. And this is... By choice, this is not where my life ended. This is where my life began again. How are you? You'd are think the you? memories still fresh would be unbearable. Okay. Give me the so I'm going to stand up and give you a real hug. How is you get to see me. How have you been doing? So, oh my gosh, this yeah. is so awesome. But what Courtney remembers most is the moment on this floor when she chose light over the dark. Nothing in your life can prepare you for this. Nothing can tell you how to handle this. I just went to the only place that I know where to go, which is positivity. Bye -bye. Leaving the hospital. And this is where Courtney's story really begins. Almost immediately, she took her experiences and her emotions and she poured them into blog posts and social media. A TV reporter, she already had a way with words and the gift of a platform. This whole story that we're doing right now is not about me. It's about other people that are going through the same kind of stuff. People go through way worse than this. And 
if I can be there for them or if I can be that light saying, you know what, if she can do it, I can do it, maybe all of it was worth it. And part of getting her message out there meant getting herself back out there, doing the things she used to do, only this time finding the balance between standing out and fitting in. <sighs> the first time I went out to dinner, it was like, okay, I, I said, I don't want to leave the house. I don't want to leave the house. People are going to stare. Yeah, they stared. I would stare. You know, there's no foot there. And it's, it's shocking. It's jarring to see. I would way rather you come up and just say, hey, how are you? You know, what, what happened? Then try not to stare, stare, whatever it is you default to. Um, I'd rather you just say, hey, how's it going? Because I'm just like you. I'm obviously eager to walk again. What do you think? What's my timeline? I think that it's probably week, week and a half, and we will get you walking. Less than two months after losing half of her leg, Courtney is planning her first prosthetic fitting. Something I really wanted was I really wanted to not make my, my, my foot the star of the show. I want to be able to blend in. And so something I really wanted was a cosmetic foot. I mean, you can see the vein and toenails that you can paint. Because getting back to things like traveling the world and activities like snowboarding Woo! is high on the list, but so is feeling like her spirited feminine self. Yay, I get to meet you in person. I'm so excited. Right after the accident, local amputee support group Wiggle Your Toes made a critical connection for Courtney. Heather Abbott lost part of her left leg in the Boston Marathon bombing. Since then, she's been a lifeline for dozens of women like Courtney. I've had moments where I have a really bad night and I'm, I'm looking for someone to talk to. And I call her up and say, when is this going to get better? And she'll assure me, this does get better. When will the pain stop? It'll stop. So I have a button right here that I push. Yeah, I've heard about this. And it comes off. Now, four years out, Heather can give Courtney a look into her future and see what's possible. And what do you do at the beach? I have a waterproof leg that looks just like this. That you can go in salt water. Mm -hmm. A woman who can relate, an amputee who's anywhere. been there, yeah. a survivor who's come out on the other side. Well, like, let's say you're on a date. When do you tell the person that you're wearing a fake leg? Well, I had so many funny experiences with that. <laughs> Courtney, I've been watching you grow stronger and constantly do amazing things. In quieter moments at home, so the weight of Courtney's mind. journey sets in. I have this pile of cards here that I purposely keep unopened, you know, for when I, when I need a little boost. All these people, for some reason, think I'm very strong. I can't let them all down. I'll be back, you. and Dad will be here. It's a responsibility few people can understand, and it only makes her more determined to get back up. This is where I've been doing my physical therapy. This is where I'm not only getting stronger, but this is where I'm going to learn how to properly use my prosthetic so that I don't create further issues down the road. Her mind already down the road. Courtney now pushes her body into recovery mode. I know I'll be back. That's never been a doubt in my mind. But this is just helping me get there a little quicker. You're stabilizing here. Her physical therapist works primarily with amputees and was drawn to Courtney's positivity right out of the gate. Sally has watched me come in here and want to talk to other amputees. It's good for you and it's good for them. I mean, I think it helps, probably helps you. But there aren't really strong support groups in the metro. And I find that some of the best support comes right in the clinic. It makes you appreciate simple things, little things, standing up, taking a walk. So this is our check socket. November 13th, so just 59 days after Courtney's accident. And she is ready to take her first steps in her new prosthetic. So do you see, you just need time for air to go in. But her high expectations are quickly grounded. So this is not as enjoyable as I imagined it. There's still some discomfort. So thrown off because it doesn't feel like a leg. And you know. the learning curve is more steep than she imagined. 
you have in your mind this like fantasy of what it's going to be like and that you're going to hop up and you're going to walk and it's going to be great. And then I'm going to go home and I'm going to clean my kitchen and I'm going to vacuum and maybe I'll go out for drinks with my friends. But what I'm feeling right now is it's going to be a while. An hour goes by and then another and steadily Courtney's confidence and tenacity build. I want it. I want it so bad that I let go of the bar because I just want it. She is pushing her body and her resolve to the absolute limit. And then a reluctant release. No, oh, I'm happy. I know. You're moving good. I'm happy to be walking. Moving good. <laughs> They're happy tears. Good. Tell the world they're happy tears. And that is Courtney's journey <laughs> thus far, perfectly summed up by her in one poignant moment. <laughs> Success, setbacks, perseverance, optimism, and a plan to pay it all forward. I was lucky. I had people there. I had resources. I had friends. I had family. Not everybody has that. But maybe I can be that for somebody. Maybe I can be the person who comes into their hospital room and says, this is the life you can live if you choose this path. Because when Sorry. you do find the light and start letting go, that was leap that of faith that doesn't tomorrow, seem as far. Who knows what's next for me, I'm but I know it's big. More, like said, and okay. I can't wait. I can't wait. Ah! <laughs> One hand. <laughs> that right there is pretty big. Mm -hmm. Courtney, if you are watching tonight, all of us here at Fox 9, we have a message to share with you. We love you, we miss you, and we are with you through every single step, hurdle, challenge, and victory. There is a void here in the newsroom without your big, bright personality. And you know what? We can't wait for you to walk back in the doors here.